Hello everyone, my name's Eric. Today, I want to share with you something that in my opinion is one of the most interesting topics in the current scientific community. Since the start of human history, we have told stories. From 2700 BC, with the Epic of Gilgamesh, we have been writing, drawing, telling, or singing tales from far off lands. Today, I want to tell you a story that is well hidden. Sounds like a riddle, right? Well, no. Today, I want to take you through the journey of genetics. Before we start, I'd like to ask you, if you had the chance, would you edit your DNA or enhance your body? Would you try to eliminate all diseases? Any hands? I know I would. Now imagine a perfect world, a world where there are no colds, no salmonella, no cancer, no overcrowding of hospitals. A world where we could focus all our energy on painting the next showpiece or playing the next concerto, the next equation to solve. I know my answer. This is the kind of world that I would like to live in. Today, I want to take you through the amazing new development in genetics, CRISPR. The CRISPR process was first discovered in 1993 by Francisco Mejica in Archaea, which are a type of single-celled organisms. Think of them like bacteria. And later, in the 2000s, the system's true use as an immune system against phages would be revealed. Awarded the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, Jennifer Duda and Emmanuel Charpentier pioneered this breakthrough. The CRISPR concept, a process employing the protein Cas9, facilitates the editing of foreign DNA introduced by hostile viruses. The real anticipation around CRISPR sparked when scientists realized its programmable potential. We began to vision a future where we could give our children enhanced traits, such as high IQ or immunity to diseases like malaria. I'd like to share with you something personal. From 2016 to 2020, I went through a nearly four year treatment period, which forced me to miss school from year three to year seven. This successful treatment had side effects and was both toxic and exhausting. I spent most of my time recovering and resting. Sometimes I even had to boost my immune system through transfusions. Navigating a primary school environment while being cautious about catching germs was very challenging and impacted both my social and educational life, leading to a substantial amount of catching up to do. Though, I hope my teachers in the, in the crowd tonight could agree with me that I did a good job at catching up. To shed light on this experience, I was given what are called the beads of courage. A chain where each bead represents a procedure within my treatment. This wasn't easy. The beads of courage signature heart says, the Purple Heart originated as and remains a military decoration awarded to those members of the armed forces wounded in action. As a member of Beads of Courage, your completion of treatment is also recognized by the prestigious Purple Heart. Diseases like mine disrupt lives all around the world. According to the NHS, one in 17 people in England will develop a rare disease in their lifetime and more than 70% of these are genetic in origin. Three quarters of these rare genetic disorders are present from childbirth and account for almost a third of neonatal intensive care deaths. Sometimes illnesses are encoded into our DNA or are inherited, often linked to specific gene pairs. Diseases like cancer, characterized by uncontrollable cell growth leading to tumors, often stem from genetic factors. 
While CRISPR has the potential to cure such diseases, significant challenges remain. Though the potential for CRISPR to cure diseases that are once deemed incurable is groundbreaking. Over 6,000 genetic diseases affecting an estimated 1 in 25 children globally, including colour blindness, haemophilia and Huntington's disease, could be cured. CRISPR has also shown diverse applications, as seen in the creation of a longer shelf life tomato. Great Ormond Street Hospital, a leading children's hospital, initiated a trial in February 2022 in collaboration with UCL Great Ormond Street Institute of Child Health. Utilising CRISPR, the trial aimed to engineer donor T cells for patients who had exhausted all other available therapies. Six children successfully received edited cells, providing us with hope for the future. The next frontier involves expanding this treatment to more children at earlier stages of their illness, offering a more proactive approach. As of April 2023, five babies have been born in the last five years from the DNA of three people in the UK. The reason for this was that the babies would probably have inherited a mitochondrial dysfunction, meaning that they wouldn't have lived a fulfilling life. They transplanted the egg's nucleus into the egg of a healthy woman, where it's fertilised by the father's sperm. The dysfunction was avoided. As I'm sure you all know, this is definitely not the traditional way of having babies. But where do we draw a line? Where do we stop? According to a New York Times article published in 2020, CRISPR technology has shown a disruptive effect on approximately half of the specimens it is applied to. This high failure rate poses challenges as the expansive nature of DNA increases the difficulty of identifying and rectifying errors. The efficient implantation of CRISPR technology into a person's system also remains an unresolved issue, highlighting the substantial amount of work that lies ahead in this field. A growing concern arises over the potential misuse of genetic modification by governments or military entities. The prospect of a, of a dictatorship or an aggressive nation producing armies through genetic modification raises not only ethical but global security issues. Vigilance and ethical consideration are crucial to ensuring the responsible use of such technologies. A growing concern revolves around the potential power gap that, will be that could be created between the wealthy and the less affluent due to the use of genetic modification technology. Careful consideration is crucial to ensuring the responsible use of CRISPR technology and ensuring that it does not promote social divisions. Indeed, there is hope on the horizon though, through ongoing research. The Crick Institute has been actively exploring ways to make humans more adapted to future potential expeditions to Mars. The identification of over 40 genes holds a promise of making humans more resilient, including stronger bones, increased resistance to radiation damage, greater bone density, and even reduced oxygen requirements. Climate change is indeed a significant global challenge, and humans may have to adapt to potentially harsher conditions. Genetic modification could help us become more resilient to hotter climates, water scarcity, or even altered oxygen levels. So, 14 years ago, when I came into the world, if the technology had been there, my parents could have not only had the, the chance to check my DNA, but to add a gene to make sure that I could produce antibodies for every type of illness out there, would it have been ethical to apply it? The ability to choose not only immunity to diseases, 
but perhaps physical or even cognitive traits could redefine our concept of human life. I'd like to end off with what the research bead says. Scientists work day and night to find the cure. With each new day, we see the moon and the sun. With each new day, we are closer to finding a cure. Thank you very much. Thank you.